bring you the witch's tale, written and produced by Alonzo Dean Cole. Let us join old Nancy, witch of Salem, and Satan, her wise black cat. <laughs> Hannah and eleven year old I be today. Yes, the Hannah and eleven year old. And now, Satan, if everybody will just douse out them lights and make it nice and dark, We'll get right down to business. Draw up to the fire and gaze into them buzz. Gaze into them deep. And soon you'll see the hands of time turn back for Hunter Gear. Soon you'll be up in the ocean off the Cape of Good Hope that's down in Africa. There, upon the stormy waters, rolls a ship whose captain's name is Vanderdecken. That's his name now. <laughs> but soon he'll be called by sailor men the Flying Dutchman. <laughs> the Flying Dutchman. <laughs> out those topsails. There a hand there. Raymer. Jacob Raymer. Coming, Raymer. The men carry. All of them are lost. Bend out those topsails. Right here, Vander Dicken. The men will not go up the clouds again. Will not say it, so. Oh, say, sir. No man alive can keep his grip on the yards against this storm. It's certain death to try. Already we've lost three. And we lose them all. I'll round this cursed cape. But right here we strive against the wind. Silence. I am master here. Just now question my commands by the board. I'll fling me to join those mates of whom you pray. Now bend me out those topsails. Aye, sir. The man is mad. Sail, he demands, against headwind. All past them. Oh, I run it to the wind. Aye, sir. Captain, swing here, Captain. Here, you specker. Holy sheet. It is torn to ribbon. And mend it and spread it on the yards once more. Well, but tear again. No sail for spun can weather the scale. A strip to bear poles, my dear. Turn thy back to the wind and seek a port. Not I. No storm can beat John Vanderdecken's master. Look! For the mainmast! Storm for the board! The mainmast has been thrown away! Oh, you cursed storm, I'll best ye yet. You may take each spar and pole, but then I'll sail the hulk into thy teeth. Captain! Mine here, Captain! Here. Two hands swept over sides, sir, with a mast. Those who are left will do their work. Raymer! Aye, sir. Give all hands access. Clear that wreckage. Free the deck and rig a jury, man. I'm here for God's sake, scrape no more. And thy helmsman turn about. Let's run with the wind to seek a port. Hey, we go ahead. We round this cape. But four days already to what's tried and failed. And back it is God's will. And God's will must bend, for mine shall triumph. Stop! No, just bless thee. Seize thy sacrament. Ah, cower, ye fools, and superstitious fear. She shall see me round this cape in spite of heaven, hell, or man. Keep her headed to the wind, helmsman. Look at him crying there. He is mad. Mad. Hey, mad with love of self. Mad with lust for power. He has been master of men and ships too long. Now he would command the element. And he desists not soon with all dead men. I say be mutiny against him. Be not a fool. No man of us is armed. His belt is filled with loaded pistols. And he will not hesitate to kill. 
Think ye the old priest we have as passenger could bring him to his senses? Nay, but now you heard that Captain Finney's will was God's. The presence of God's priest would but inflame his mind the more. Kramer, the priest that come on deck, look there. I give thee greetings, son. Holy fathers, our love is life. Get thee again below. Aye, before Jan van der Decken vent his spite on thee. Get for the wind, Captain. Get for the wind. Quick, father, he'll return. Nay, my sons, I fear not thy bitter captain. <laughs> The man of God hath crawled on deck. He has seen me. Greetings to thee, my Herr van der Decken. Well, How dost like the winds thy master sends this evening? How like thee his empty thunders? <laughs> Stay and watch me best the storm he sends. Watch me round this cape against his will. Four days have I watched and seen thee fail. I shall fail no longer. I shall win my way tonight. Only he can win who strives by faith. Turn faith I have. Faith in myself alone. No man can live by and for himself alone. Ah, who shall he live for then? Another man who is selfish as himself? I know a man. I know my kind. Perhaps he should put faith in women. <laughs> the best of them are devils from their cradles. But thou didst me have faith in God. <laughs> He is the greatest lie of all. He's the executor and God no more. Thy blasphemies will doom us all. Beware. His voice cries to thee from the storm, rash man. It bids thee fall upon thy knees and pray his pardon. Say ye so? Then hear the voice of John van der Decken answer. By the servant shall I show in what contempt I hold the master. Walk thee to the rail, priest. But thou art going by the board. Oh, not yes, the man of God. Now yes. stand back. I shoot the man who moves a hand. Oh, Stay me. Risk not thy lives for mine, my son. Stand to the rail. And stand until I throw thee to the sea. But first, thou art who art supposed to reign above. Hark to my defiance. The life of this thy servant shall be to thee my challenge. Oh, 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 and oh, thy oh, loudest thunder. I laugh at thy impotent rage. Oh, don't have the door. God will destroy us all. Just hear me, God. Despite thee and all of thy heaven, I shall kill thy man. I shall best thy storm. I shall round thy cursed cape. Oh! 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 And lightning, it has struck the ship. It was sent by God. The gale hath died to silence. Look, in the bow, a blinding light was sent by heaven. Hey. Oh. Oh. Hey, what? Who art thou who has taken shape with a non dazzling glow? I am a messenger. God hath deigned to answer thee, John van der Decken. I, I did not mean Fall to. Fall upon thy knees and hearken to thy doom. Spare me. Spare my life. Thou shalt not die. To live shall be thy curse. In the teeth of a gale shalt thou fly forever. Always seeking harbor, never reaching port. A phantom ship of death shall be thy home. Thy crew shall be the blackened souls of sinners of the sea. Thou, their master and their slave, shall be alone of flesh and blood. Behold thy living tomb as it rises from the depth. Oh, nay! Nay, nay, not on that. It is a hulk of horror. Is thy eternal home. Oh, nay, nay, I beg. Tis a nightmare ship. Black as night with sails, the hue of blood. Oh, oh please, oh, please. Grinning fleshless specters line its rails. Oh. oh, nay, nay. Forgive, oh, Father. Holy priest, thou art a man of God. Intercede and beg for me. Oh. Ah, I am forced. Forced upon this awful bark. Have pity. Have pity. Oh. Stay, messenger of God, I pray thee, wait. No soul is ever lost. Even this man's can be saved, redeemed. His soul is black with selfish pride. Only love can wash it clean. He will need man's love to find love. His fate hath been decreed. What man here will share his doom to aid him in the search? I, Father. Think well, old man. Thy days of earthly strife are numbered. Thy reward and rest at hand. If thou wouldst teach him love, thou too must sail upon this ghostly bark, a living man amongst the dead. I am ready. I go with thee, son. Companion, 
flesh and blood. Thou givest me the life I would have taken from thee. Ah, foolish soul. And thou didst say all living creatures were selfish as thyself. Thy curse was to be eternal. But this good man's sacrifice hath won thee again to hope. I shall not have to sail. Thou shalt sail upon yon bark, as I have said. But once, each seven years, thy phantom ship may touch a port, and thou, for the space of a single moon, may seek for love thyself, and cleanse thy soul of pride. Oh. Come, my son. I come. Seven years among the dead. Never flying into the gate, and then a port for a single moon. Oh, Lord, how oh Lord, how oh Lord. Two hundred years and eighty on this ghastly ship of death, ever flying into the gale. Thirty times and nine have I been in port for a single moon. And now the hour draws nigh when I shall rest on shore again. And bitterness is in thy soul, John. Thy heart is filled with plans of evil for thy visit amongst men. Aye, I shall employ this moon ashore to bring dishonor, death, destruction in my path. No, have the centuries of suffering taught thee nothing? Yeah, by example of thy God, they have taught me how to hate. For I have endured his awful vengeance. Oh, vengeance on thee hath never been his purpose. His plan is thy regeneration. So this loving father destroys his son with a curse of living death to save him. Uh, oh, cease thy lying sophistry. My centuries of pain have confirmed the truth I knew of old. That love is but a lie, and that self is all that matters. Yet for two hundred years and eighty, I years and eighty, I years and eighty, I years and eighty, I have been thy comrade on this phantom ship of death. And how at first I phantom ship of death. And how at first thine. I believe it was love that made thee share my awful fate. Ah, but my brain at last searched out the truth. That which is worse than death to me meant to thee, but long worse than death to me meant to thee, but long worse than death to me meant to thee, but long good life. Thou art old, about to die. Thy seeming sacrifice has let thee live almost three centuries beyond thy span. Poor Jean, I pity thee. Poor Jean, I pity thee. How more than blind are they who will not see? Oh, pity me not. Listen, priest. Thirty times and nine now have I gone ashore. For one brief fleeting moon in each long seven years, each time I have been humble, seeking that love which now I know doth not exist. Everywhere I found distrust and looks and fear. For though men knew not that I am he they call the Flying Dutchman, they sense I am a being set apart. I am of the dead who live. And in mine eyes men see the horror stamped by centuries of pain. Thirty times and nine I sought for love and found but hate. And now I shall employ my moon ashore to pay. Our second ship draws into port. Again for a moon I join the world of men who worship thy revengeful God. And I shall bring dishonor, death, destruction in my path. Dost hear me, God? Dost hear me, God? Dost hear me, God of vengeance? I go ashore to pay thee for my curse. I go ashore to pay. As a buff, they Satan, we'll tell folks what the flying Dutchman did when he went to saw the 40th time. <laughs>
bring you the witch's tale, written and produced by Alonzo Dean Cole. Let us join old Nancy and Satan, her wise black cat. <laughs> Hannah, I'm three year old I be today. Yes, sir, going on a Hannah and four. Now, if you folks will just douse out them lights, we'll spin you the finish of our yarn about that famous sailor man. We begun the last time you was here. Yeah. That's right, Satan. We told how that fella Vanderdecken, for his blasphemy against his lord, was condemned to sail the seas until his selfish soul is cleansed by love, which he's allowed to come ashore and look for once each seven years. Will, sir? To help him in his search, a good old priest volunteered to share his curse. But his help didn't do much good. For when we left them, uh, but, but draw up to the fire and gaze into the embers, hear for yourselves just how we left this Vanderdecken. <laughs> Thirty times and nine now have I come ashore. For one brief fleeting moon in each long seven years. Thirty times and nine I sought for love and found but hate. And now I shall employ my moon ashore to bring dishonor, death, destruction in my path. Dost hear me, God of vengeance? I go ashore to pay thee for my curse. I go ashore. <laughs> now gaze into them was deep and hear the finish of my yarn about the flying Dutchman. <laughs> The Flying Dutchman. <laughs> Henry and this license year of 1810. Even such an old sea dog as you can't believe the focus or yarn of the Flying Dutchman. Well, out there in Portsmouth Harbor lies my proof. That ship's the Dutchman's right, the mother's son. No, Uncle Henry, you merely say that because it's a dingy-looking old hulk you didn't see come in last night. I tell you, no one saw that ship come in. And I tell you, I recognize it. For an I-300 year, every sailor man upon the seven seas has seen that black two-decker fly by him at least once. In a dead calm, I've seen it cross our bows like lightning. Backwards, with ever stay and sail straining again a gale. While we on a human ship couldn't even smell a breeze. Are you sure you hadn't been sampling the ship's rum barrel when you saw all that? Yes, oh, <laughs> yes I am. <laughs> if, 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 if that out there's an actual ship, why don't we see hider hair of any living creature on its rails or on the yard? Oh, oh, look, Uncle Henry. There's a small boat coming from our port side now. Well, I'll be... Now, when did they launch that? While you were so busy talking. And there's two men in it. Two living men is all the ghost ship carries. But neither of those men or their clothing look three centuries old. And you say that's the Flying Dutchman, eh? The Dutchman don't grow any older. That's part of his curse. And neither does the priest who travels with him. He gets new clothes when they come to shore every seven years. That means a land about here, I think. Well, I'm leaving before they do. You and Judy better come, too. Nonsense. All right. But I'm a warning you to have nothing to do with a big fella coming in that small boat. Henry, such superstition is unchristian-like show you what I think of your ridiculous fears, I'm going to invite those men to be my guests. What? 
Peter Cooper, you're going to take them into your house? If they care to come. You, you don't know what you're saying. <laughs> Why, the Dutchman's a holy devil. You make me hope that big man in the boat is your flying Dutchman, Uncle Henry. He sounds interesting. Indeed, he does. <laughs> they're, they're, they're landing, Papa. And, and I'm a going before the Dutchman's eyes light on me. Oh, he's a prize, <laughs> and I tell you. Oh, look at Uncle Henry run. My superstitious credulity almost discourages me with humankind. Here the strangers come. Speak to him, Papa. Oh, good morning, gentlemen. Greetings to the friends. Hi, greetings. Why didn't thou not run at my approach? Run? Why should we run? Yeah, thy companion did. Oh, he, 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 he had an appointment elsewhere. Uh, gentlemen, as your strangers and our part within are not of the best, I wish to invite you to be my guests. I guess. We thank thee truly, but... Do not hesitate. I'm only an humble minister. But my daughter and I will strive to make you comfortable. Thou art a minister? A man of God? Yes. And thou art his daughter? Yes. <laughs> a minister and his child. We thank thee, sir, but my comrade and I cannot... Uh, I guess. Stay, we can. We shall. I thank thee, worthy servant of the Lord. I accept thy invitation gladly. Oh, John, thou must not abuse the hospitality of this good man's house. Thou must not harm his child. I have merely suggested that she take a walk with me but this afternoon. I know thou meanest wrong to her because she is the daughter of a man who serves the God you hate. I shall warn her and her father. Tell them who and what thou really art. Listen, fool. The tale of the flying Dutchman they call but idle superstition. Thou wilt tell these people nothing. For they will not believe thee till I prove the words which thou wouldst say, and then it will be too late. Captain, are you ready for all the Aye, I come to thee, my child. Farewell, priest. Ere I embark again for seven years of living death to the god of hate who hath condemned me, I have a sacrifice to me. It might be many months ere their body was found. What made you think of such an awful thing as that? The thought of wow one who was left alive. A father, for instance, might suffer long and keenly ere his, uh, <laughs> child's, for instance, fate was known. If I were lost, it would kill my father. <laughs> but of course, nothing will happen to me with you here to protect and me. I... Thou dost trust me. Of course I trust you. Thou art a child. Thy purity enables thee to read men's hearts. That's what my father says. And I know your heart is good, because in one whose eyes show such unhappiness, any evil that was there before must have been completely burned away. What would thee think if I taught thee different? Stop acting as though you meant to frighten me, Captain. And sit down on this log. Die! Come. I'm sorry. <laughs> I sit close beside thee. Thou hast never shown fear of me as others. Why should I show fear of you? Uh, no reason. Except that people always do. Captain. I think someone ought to talk to you. Of what? Yourself. I don't think you know yourself at all. No, thou thinkest not. I think you're the sort of man who thinks he's awfully bad and who tries to be bad, all because he's afraid to let folks see what's really underneath. So? Yes. You're exactly like a little boy who lives next door to us. When he's outside in the garden, he's always playing at being Indian and scalping people. Yet I've seen him through the window of his room at night when he thinks he's all alone, fondling his sister's dog. Thou sayest I resemble him? Exactly. I've seen him stand out in the rain when the lightning flashed and thunder roared just to prove how brave he is. 
And all the time I knew he wanted to hide his head in his mother's lap and cry with fear. You're exactly like him, Anita. Well, I... Well, that's just the way he glares at you. Oh, little fool, and I... And rude and ill-mannerly, just as you are. I... How long since you've seen your mother, Captain? Well, I... I never saw her. Have any sisters? Nay. Ever married? Nay. In law? Nay. Well, that explains everything. You've never been brought up. What? You've had no one but God to go to with your troubles. No wonder your eyes show such unhappiness. For God must seem awfully far away sometimes to one who has no other friend. Yes, yes. Awfully far away. How secluded this place is. If one were lost here, they never would be found. Well, Captain, why don't you kill me as you planned? Yes. But I wasn't a bit afraid. You see? I know the little boy next door. <laughs> Playing in here. Scalping people. Suppose you put your <laughs> suppose you put your head in my lap and have a cry. Why? He does sometimes when no one else is near. Why? Seems to help. I don't think you why? Why? Father, forgive thy foolish child. Father, forgive thy foolish child. I hate to see you gentlemen go. Your fortnight here has brought us happiness. My ship awaits, Mr. Cooper. I cannot tarry longer. But my old friend here will stay ashore with thee. Jan, my son! This voyage I take alone. Thou wilt share my punishment no longer. Thou hast found at last! I have found myself. I don't understand you, gentlemen. My comrade may explain when I am gone. And now, ere I bid a last farewell, Mr. Cooper may... May I kiss thy daughter once, as a father on the ground? I will answer that, John. Kiss me as a lover on the lips. I... Oh, I did not mean to speak. I do love thee, Judith, and love thee. And I love thee. Oh, nay, child, love me not. Another will come to thee. One of thy age and goodness, one worthy of thy love. I want no one but you. But, John, take me with you on your voyage. Oh, nay, I cannot. Take thy arms from about me. I must go. Oh, no, John. Come back. Farewell. Oh, John, wait. Your black ship is not ready. I see no sign of crew. They are waiting. Waiting for my coming. Oh, he's in the small boat. Leaving me. The skiff flies through the waters by magic. Look, already he's reached the black ship's side. He's climbing up the ladder. He's aboard. Father, the sails of his black ship sail. Yet there's no wind. It's putting off to sea. Farewell, my son, my comrade. Come back to me, John. They're sinking beneath the waters. Listen. I love thee. Love thee. Oh, gracious father, my prayers are answered. His long voyage is at an end. Thou hast taken back his soul. <laughs> and now you see why the flying Dutchman is seed upon the seas no more. Well, that's the end of that, on Satan. <laughs> Thank you.